So today we're going to build a wall feature. So you're seeing a lot of these um, at the moment online, um, specifically on things like Pinterest, where people are decorating um, an office space or they're doing feature walls at home. Um, and a lot of that is just to transform a space, uh, bring a bit of warmth into a, an environment where maybe you've got quite a lot of um, paler tones and you want to just use the, the natural colour of the timber to just bring a bit of warmth through. So today we're just going to show you how to build a really simple uh, wall feature. Uh, choosing your material, that's a key thing and I suppose that a lot of that is to do with the kind of the aesthetic of your choice, you know, what styling you're wanting to go for. Um, what I've gone for in this is um, an American white oak. Simple reason for that is because it's got a nice warm tone to it, um, which will warm up the room, uh, the decor. Um, but also with American oak, it's quite clear of knots. Um, so it allows you to have quite consistent kind of look without seeing the occasional um, knot here or there, which might potentially, um, when you stand back and look at it, it could sort of uh, stand out too much and um, draw the eye in. So to get that consistency across all of it, um, yeah, we're going for a, a fairly knot free um, white American oak. Choosing the, uh, the finish is really important. Um, you don't really want to work with um, a sawn finish, um, although you know some might want to go for that more industrial look, but what we're doing is we're going for something that's planed all round, so PAR. Um, the reason for that is not only do we want that smooth finish, but we also want it to be uh, regularised as well. If you see anything that tapers or isn't square, when you put it on the wall, those gaps aren't going to be consistent, uh, and in which case that might start to really stand out like a sore thumb. So you want to make sure everything's nice and consistent and in a row. So like I said, we're going to go for a planed all round finish, um, square edged. Um, and that should be perfect to put on the wall. Um, and you can also, after that, you, you'd only need to light sand and maybe even oil it if you needed to. Uh, but we're just gonna go for it in its raw form. So the next stage is quite important in terms of the design and the layout. So being able to set out your design is really key at this stage. So um, what you can go for is a horizontal um, or you can go for a vertical. Uh, design and you just set out a space of the wall that you want to do for a feature it could be from wall to wall um, and you might want to go from um, you know the the, uh, the the floor right up to the ceiling what we've gone for is a vertical um, uh, formation um, and we've decided to come up off the floor um, the height of the skirting board um, but then take it right to the roof so you get that nice continuous feel but it's not too heavy and it's not sat on the floor it's got like a lift to it and it looks it appears as if it's slightly floating um, because we've gone for the vertical battening um, i've put some horizontal battens in there um, just so that they can um, we can pin it to those battens and it can carry it um, now i've just gone for a basic american poplar um, but you can use a cheap pine you can probably get some two by one from your local diy uh, merchant you can just walk in and pick up a bundle of it um, because you're not really going to see it uh, but we just we went for poplar just so we can paint it because it takes a great paint coat and we can just get it back to the same kind of coloring i suppose what we want to do is make those battens a bit nude so that this stands out rather than what you're pinning it to. So what do you need uh, tools wise? I mean, to be honest, it's pretty straightforward. Once you've got things uh, planed all round and sent from your timber merchant um, and you've got your battens on the wall, which you fix there, um, the only thing that you really need to do is get a pin gun, um, which you can pick up from Screwfix. Make sure that you get the right length pins as well, that they're gonna go through um, your um, your battens and go into the, bat the wall battens behind uh, but you don't have to have one of these um, you can actually um, just pin it with a hammer and some very fine nails um, the finer the better because you don't want to split the timber um, or you can even pilot hole and screw um, maybe with some um, uh, if you're using oak you might want to use some gold screws because then the colour won't stand out too much. Um, but yeah, you should be able to do it with that. And another really key important thing, which I always use, is some spacers. Easy to forget, but actually when you're putting the battens on the wall, you need to get that consistent spacing. It's really important that you use spacers so that you can do that. So don't forget these, they're really important as well. You should be able to use anything really, as long as it's a consistent thickness. I've gone for six mil, but you might want to go for 10 mil or 20. Next phase, pinning. So just get straight into it. Just make sure that you've lined your, your timbers up with the top 
with a ceiling, you've got your spacers in. And really, those spacers will probably fall out in a minute, but um, as long as you get a pin in quick, then you know you've set yourself up with your right spacing. So I'm gonna just get one straight in. So push in and pin. Push in, pin, off you go. So there we are, a pretty simple way of getting the timber up onto the wall. Um, and um, you follow that all the way down um, as far as you want to go to the pattern you want to do. Um, nice and simple. And I am by no means a joiner or a tradesman, trust me. In fact, I'm a novice. So doing something like this, as long as you've got the right kit and you take your time, you should be able to do it quite easily. You can buy these white American oak battens from us, PAR, planed all round, um, online. Um, or by giving us a call here and you can have them delivered in three working days. So you order on the start of the week, Monday, and you may get them in time for your project on a weekend.